Hey guys, welcome to video number three out of three in the kitchen table stamper taco fiesta stampa stack. If you're just joining us in video number three, you should know that there might be some taco fiesta stampa stack class packets available for you in the kitchen table stamper store. You can check out kitchentablestamper.com slash shop. And then when you're in the store, on the right-hand side, you're going to see a filter that you can drop down and choose class packets. Check and see if we've got any of these handy-dandy Taco Fiesta stamp -a stack class packets. You'll get a quarter of a package of the um, Enjoy the Journey Designer Series paper, a third of a spool of black and white ribbon. You'll get almost a half a pack of the um, flat pearls we do your die cutting for you plenty of white cardstock for stamping your envelopes are included your card bases are cut and scored and all of your basic die cutting is done for you makes this speedy fun stamp -a stack even easier if you missed video number one we made long time no taco and in video number two we did your nacho average friend and we are shaking up our embossing folder in this stack between the original version and the second. And our third card today is Holy Guacamole, It's Your Birthday. Now these are Wonder Recipe number four cards. And so in video number one, we took three sheets of the Enjoy the Journey Designer Series paper and we cut them according to the Wonder Recipe. Now this is a one sheet wonder template and it's available to print from the website for free along with project sheets for each of these designs. For our last three cards in the series, we're gonna take these three stacks of one and three eighth by three and a quarter inch designer series paper. Let's get them adhered to our card bases, which we also took care of in video number one. We did our embossing and we talked about how when you're doing a stamp a stack class, you want to do all of your stamping, then all of your coloring, all of your fussy cutting, all of your background stamping or embossing, tie all your bows. We, you do these kind of in a batch work fashion. Cut the designer series paper, figure out how many cards it makes, and then do each step for every card all at the same time. These are embossed with the brand new, it'll be available May 2nd. So by the time you're seeing this, it'll be available already at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. This is the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. It's in the brand new annual catalog. And we went ahead and did all seven card bases at one time. Our original design, as you can see here, is a little different. We used the crosshatch pattern from the 3D Basics embossing folder. Now the 3D Basics embossing folders is a three pack that's available online exclusive. So marissaalvarez.stampinup.net, click shop, and then navigate to the online exclusives and you'll find all kinds of fun things in that category that are only available, not in any catalog, but on the internet only. And the 3D Basics were um, on stop sell for a while, but should be back soon according to the inventory status report. So hopefully those will be um, coming back into stock any day now too. We've got some amazing products coming from Stampin' Up! Um, in the last online exclusives and in, in this brand new catalog. All right, so we're gonna take each of these pieces and just kind of toggle them on the front of the card base. It's a party after all, right? Holy guacamole, it's your birthday. So we're gonna do kind of one this way and that all the way down the front of the card and do that for all three cards. All right, we've got our designer series paper on all three copies. Let's set it aside for a minute and bring in some basic white cardstock and a stamp and pierce mat. Our nacho, our taco fiesta stamp set is photopolymer, 23 pieces, and just the punniest thing you ever saw. It's carrying into the new catalog, so we're gonna have a whole year of, of taco fun. We've got Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, and we're gonna stamp our pinata. Now, I say this over and over and over again, I feel like through these stampa stacks, but I'm gonna stamp one to demonstrate how I color each piece for you. 
but I highly recommend that when you're doing the stamp -a stack you do all the pinatas so three pinatas all the sombreros that you need for all the cards all the tacos all of the all of your pieces at once stamp the memento stamping and then color all those pieces and then cut all those pieces and it'll really make your stamp -a stack fly by so fast all right we're gonna color our pinata with daffodil delight and i did for my uh, body of my pinata all light daffodil delight and just a nice um, simple solid coat i love how these markers give you a nice smooth solid fill without any streaks it makes everybody look like a professional so easy just do little circles and fill in the whole thing all right we've got our nice fill on the pinata now we're going to do the nose and ears they're going to be daffodil delight also but we're going to add a little shadow so that it kind of pops away from the body why i have to do it with the ears i don't know because we're going to add a sombrero <laughs> but i still have to finish it and then the top of the sombrero we're going to do light daffodil and add a little shadow all right now before we put these guys away we're going to do this little ring at the center of the saddle or the blanket and that's good oh next up let's do melon mambo and we're going to do the outer ring of this little blanket or saddle and we're gonna do this little center ring I'm doing both at one time but now I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow at the ends and across the top just the tiniest little bit just to build in a little dimension there now the tail we're gonna do just a very light like a flick fill in the tail light and then from the base we'll just flick a little bit of dark and from the ends flick a little bit of dark and then these little dots dot 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 cute yes all right now the sombrero we're gonna do light melon mambo and just fill in the bottom here and i think that's all of our melon mambo until we get to the candy but we're gonna stamp those other rectangle next all right now for the rest of our pinata and sombrero here we're gonna take dark granny apple green and fill and then we're gonna go over the granny apple green with light shaded spruce. So we're moving it from a granny apple green color to more of a garden green color. And that'll be for all the little areas left, the fringe on the blanket here and the top um, design here on the sombrero. And then Got to solve our problems, right? When Stampin' Up! doesn't give us garden green Stampin' Blends, we make them. All right. Super cute, right? All right, let's cut these guys out. Well, we're going to leave that and actually our poppy parade also because we're going to do the candies on our rectangles. First, let's cut our pieces. that cute if enjoy the journey designer series paper had a pinata that would be it <laughs> i love it so much let's get a little sombrero to add to the top we're going to cut everything out when you're fussy cutting with a little tiny um, border of white all the way around it really does help to camouflage any imperfections in your cutting if you get a little too close or it's not exactly smooth you can really throw a lot of cover for yourself that way. 
I'm gonna pop a mini glue dot on my hat. We want the hat on our pinata's head, and now I can't lose it. Super cute. <laughs> Just makes me so happy. Now, inside your envelope, you're gonna have some die cutting done for you. This is a stitched rectangle, and we did that from basic white cardstock using the stitch rectangles dies this is what i call f it's somewhere in the middle it's about 3 and 11 16 by 1 and 11 16 if you're cutting your own or substituting that for something else and we're going to do a little stamping on each of these rectangles let's get our granny apple green i mean our garden green for our sentiment and some memento for some details and holy guacamole, it's your birthday. We're gonna put that at the bottom of the stitch rectangle using the garden green ink. And then once you've got that in there, oh, I'm going to get my stamp and Pierce mat in here. It gives me a much better impression. I'm working on the work pad, so the grid paper, so that wasn't too bad, but with the photopolymer, the stamp and Pierce mat made, makes a world of difference. All right, so we've got the little candy here that's springing from our pinata. So let's go one and then rotate it so that the same candies aren't next to each other. And then two. And then what I like to do is just dry fit my little pinata because we want one to look like it's springing forth from the center top of our pinata. So if we dry fit that little guy in there, and then we stamp, we're gonna have perfect placement. Now let's slide the ink out so we can color. You can do these all multicolor if you want. You can really get wild with this. That's kind of maybe how it would be in reality, but I like everything the same. So I'm gonna do my round candies with Poppy Parade. And what I'm gonna do is fill in with the light and then just swipe, almost like we did with the avocado pit, just swipe like a little C, a little shadow. And then these are so little, you won't need to do much blending, just giving that a round, a nice round shape with that shadow is so such a nice little detail. And we've got our candies the round ones. Now let's do the oblong ones. And I'm going to do those actually with light granny apple and light melon mambo. And I'm just going to do alternating stripes on the candy. So green, pink, green, pink. Cute. All right. Now pinata background in your um, packet. You're going to find in the one of the green card envelopes, one of the green card kits, either black and white baker's twine or black baker's twine. I'm gonna do one set of my samples with each of the twine. You get what you get, that's what I had. And we're gonna do three inches of twine. You're gonna have extra for hanging more pinatas. We're gonna take a dimensional and our twine and our pinata hold the twine on the back of the pinata and secure with a dimensional. Now we're gonna go back to our little minis because I'm trying to use up all these edges. So we're gonna start cutting apart and let's support this little pinata with bits. Get some on the tail, get some on the front. That's pretty good. Now we can peel and stick. I love this card. I love this pinata. I love the falling candy. I love the gingham bow holding the string at the top. Just so fun. All right, leave the string up at the top and position your pinata so you can see all your candies. Cute. Then we're gonna go to that card with that gorgeous ribbon. I'm gonna tie a bow. 
And so you just start with a couple of inches and loop and then swoop, tuck, pull, hold the center, adjust the size of your ears and then cut away from the card and clean up the edges or the angles. And this one, all we have to do is clean that up a little bit. Look at that, that's all we're throwing away. Awesome, I love not wasting any ribbon. All right, grab a glue dot on the back of the knot, pick up the glue dot, stretch the string so it looks like the pinata's hanging and put the glue dot right at the top of the ribbon, holding the string. Three inches will be just a little bit too much, depending on where you put the other end at the back of the pinata, so trim. And there's your holy guacamole. It's your birthday. One for each of your three copies of the card. Isn't that cute? <laughs> That's a birthday fiesta for sure. All right, let's get them on the card fronts. But we can't forget this little detail here. Do you see this little like pinking edge? This fun fiesta. I love this. We did this for you with the um, borders, the basic borders dies. This die set is a six border set. They're stitched on both sides, clouds, and then like a chevron. Here's the pinking one that we did, a cute little scallop, a curve, and it stitches both sides of the cut. So we took one inch by six and a half inches, laid the die in the center, and now we've got two rows of scallops that we can use. And we want, they're really not scallops, are they? Well, peaks, points, pinking edges. Well, we want five for this card. One, two, so let's cut this away. Three, four, five. And one for each card. One, two, three, four, five. And then we need another one out of here. So we'll cut this away. And you're gonna have some extra pieces here with your extra designer series paper and your extra ribbon. You can make some more cards. One, two, three, four, five of these. And cut it away. And then those are for more cards. Let's adhere these to the rectangles. A little bit of dry adhesive, kind of low of center. And then we can flip, add some more adhesive, and add to the card. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's catch up the other copies. Pretty awesome, right? Holy guacamole, that's a birthday party. Last thing we have to do is add some fire. Look at those iridescent flat pearls. They're just so much fun. We're gonna add three to each card, a big one, two small ones. Of course, you can do whatever you wanna do with yours. I'm gonna put them kind of up the side here, big one, little one, little one, kind of like they're mixed up in the candies and falling. Let's catch these guys up. There's our last sparkle. Holy guacamole, that's a stamp a stack. <laughs> All right, you guys, if you have any questions about the project, if, you're look, um, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com to check out, see if there are class packets still available for this awesome stack. Buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com and slash shop. When you get there, filter for class packets and a shop Stampin' Up 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Stampa Stack.